Hey, Michelson here from Tesla Driveway. This is an installation video for the Auto Present door handles from EV Offer, uh, RGB edition, and as well at the same time I installed the soft close doors, uh, Mark III edition. So this is a start to finish video, pretty detailed. This is video one of three. Uh, each video is about an hour long. Um, I'm going to show you how to. Uh, you know, do all the installation on all four doors and also wiring up the harness and all that. Um, it's doable. It took me like 40 hours total. I spent half of that time probably looking at videos and um, double checking the instructions. Experienced technicians could probably do it in a day or two, um, but if you're doing it yourself, it's going to take longer. Um, you need the right tools. You're going to need a Torx. You're going to need some kind of tool to get bolts out when you drop them. Um, you're going to need those plastic pry tools. They're essential. And you're probably going to need a multimeter to do a continuity test on that um, plug in the B pillar. So here we go. All right, so uh, we're going to install both the easy open door handles, these, and as well, we're going to install the soft closed doors, as I mentioned. Two boxes. Here's the box for the handles. It's smaller. I've kind of got one of them laid out here so you can see it. And then as well, you know, the box for the soft closed doors is bigger. There's more, you know, large pieces. I find it helpful to lay it out on the table and kind of see what the whole thing is going to look like. Um, everything that you need for the soft closed doors is going to be inside of the door, meaning you don't have to wire anything to or from the door to get the soft closed doors to work. They plug into the components that are there. Um, to the wiring harness that's there, right? And if you kind of lay this out, you can see like the black and white pieces get hooked together here. This piece goes here to the motor, right? Pretty straightforward, right? Uh, likewise, this piece goes over here to the latch and it plugs in over here. Um, and there's, so there's just not that much to it. You know, it looks complicated because you're pulling a door apart and taking the window out and all that, but you know, take lots of pictures and you'll be all right. Um, Basically, there aren't that many, there aren't that many, uh, you don't have to solder anything up or anything like that. Okay, with the, with the door handles, the box is smaller, but the wiring is a little more complex. So basically, to start, this has to be wired up to the hot side of the battery, up in the front of the car. We're going to go through that. It's not that complicated. I haven't run anything through the firewall yet, but we'll figure it out. But this is going to go to the hot side of the battery. Um, then this is going to plug into, um, there's a plug up under the front wheel well, and there's a name for it, but it doesn't matter, right? Well, I'll show you in the video. This will plug there, and then this plugs into the little ECU, or whatever they call this. Right, so it said plugs in here, and then each of the doors plug into this box. Front left, right left, front right, right right, rear right. Um, you get the idea. And obviously the cables to get to the left rear would be longer, right? Because they've got a longer way to go. So you've got cables for all the doors. They plug into here. The one that goes through the um, B pillar for the real rear door is a little more complex. It's probably, I think, might be the most complex thing about it is wiring up these pins. But um, we'll get into that. I think it's probably going to be easier than what it seems. But you know, that's basically it. And when you kind of look at it that way, it's not so bad. So let's jump into it. We're going to start by taking things apart, taking the door out, getting the, uh, the front taken apart and all that so we can get to everything that we need. Um, here we go. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to see is how to get this piece off. So basically, it's piece number one. And it tucks down in here like that, and you're going to pop it from the top. And it's kind of tucked in behind the side of the glove box there too, but it just pops off the top and then there's a piece like that. So don't try to pull it from the bottom first. And then it looks like there's, um, you know, one of these pins you got to pop out um, like you see other places in the car right there. And then this should come off and the rest of it should start coming apart. All right, so the pin's out. Now we should be able to just get this guy off here. So then, you know, I think it's helpful to get this off first. A lot of the videos just say take it all off, get it out of the way, which I will. 
right? But once you get that off, then the rest of this is just coming right off pretty easily. So it's popping right out. Cool. Okay, this guy, you want to know, it just pops straight up, right? So I gave enough force and it came straight up like that. So that's the piece um, along the sill right there. So these little guys, they pop up like that, and you need to get this wire out. All right, hard to do with one hand, but shit. Mm. All right, and then the wire comes out. You gotta get all that out so that you can take, pop this guy off, and get the other piece out. All right, so when you're getting this thing out, there's little tabs right here. You gotta push those tabs in like that. And there's and there's a couple of them. There's one here, one here, and then one here, right? And then once you push all those in, this guy just pops off. And now you can get this piece out, right? Because you gotta be able to get to the B pillar and wire this stuff up, so it's the way it is. Okay, so this guy up here for the B pillar, this just pops off, right? So I got a 22 and a half Y, was delivered in August, so you know, I'm sure they switch this up from time to time, but um, yeah, so actually it goes this way. <laughs> but I'm not taking a seatbelt off, right? But I needed to get this thing off so I can get the rest of the V pillar apart. But all this just popped right off, right? It's all just clips. It just pushed out, right? So, um, just so you know, because you don't always know, right? And then for this V pillar, right here, this cover, there's um, a Torx in there. So I gotta get a wrench, get that guy out, and then this piece should pop off right here. So let's do that. All right, so here it is right here. So this guy is a Torx, and if you're not, it's a 25, and if you're not familiar with those, it's not not a Phillips, don't try to do that. Get some Torx bits, and um, yeah, it's right in there. Good to know, because you might be pushing on this thing forever, trying to get that panel off, and um, not know that there's a Torx in there. So let's back that guy out and get it off. All right, so still in the B pillar. So something to know about this. So after you get that 25 uh, hex nut out, and it's right there, and it goes in, nothing complicated. It wasn't hard to get out, and screws in right there. Then you've got two little pops down here, right? So you're just pushing these guys out. I had to get back in there with one of these things to do it, because um, I didn't want to just push this out. But it does just pop out, right? But I used this and got to the pins to push it. but. So all this down below just pops out. You want to be careful not to rip these wires and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, now that I got some of this stuff out, I want to show you, um, you know, the tough part is knowing where the tabs are, right? So you can't just go to ripping these things out and you need to know where the tabs are. So I like, if I had a diagram of where, what I could pull where, you know, then that would be great. So I don't have a diagram, but I'm just going to show you. So this is the first piece right here. You're going to pull it from the top and it's got a tab down there on the bottom. This is the piece that fits below all of that and it sits along here. And uh, so it's got a screw at the top. It's got that 25 uh, hex nut there. You gotta get that out. And then the rest of them just pop up, right? So you're just prying it up. And you need to get some of these plastic tools that I've been using like this, get a set of them, they're pretty cheap. Um, you can't do it without these things and make sure they're plastic um, So then this piece is Tough to get out. Let's see. There's the top piece here And this all pries out sideways you can see these tabs it it pops out um, So there's nothing to unscrew uh, for this piece it fits up here um, But there's a piece below that that's pretty tough to get out you gotta do a lot of squirming. Let me find that one. Okay, I set it right here. And it does have, you know, as I mentioned, a 25 hex up here. 
um, at the top and then the rest of these you're just popping them out and the way I had to do it is I kind of reached in there with my tool and then pried it you know using that little pry tool you, know, you can get in there it's got like a fork you know and you, you pop it so I didn't try to just it's tough because you're up against the seat in there so it's, you, you can't get in there and pull it back so I found it helpful to use that tool to do that this one's a little weird down here and you need to get this one pried up so that you can get that part off and um, to get this part off because it kind of sits up under here but there is one 25 hex right back here this piece well it's not a 25 hex but it's a tough one that I had to pop off um, I had to get to it with the tool it's right there Hopefully you can see it yeah but I kind of had to pull this carpet back to be able to get to that so I could lift this up and get this piece out And I'm gonna leave this like it is. I think that'll be fine Because um, I don't I don't think I need to take this out any further and to get this lifted up. I had to pull the seat up I guess with some Versions, there's a little tab you got to move. I've got as I mentioned uh, a, a 22 uh, Tesla Y uh, delivered in August so uh, mine didn't have any such tab to move the seat just pulled up, you know, you just Give it some a little bit of force and it pops right up um, Yeah, and then this piece goes up under this and kind of protects it's a protective barrier there, but um, Yeah, there's that part Okay, so it's a little bit of a trick. So next step is to get all this out so we can get through the firewall. And this guy, um, there's these little pop. Let me see if I can get the camera down here. So the trick with this is there's these little pop things. You know, they pop out. Hopefully you can see this. Yeah, you can see it. Um, like this you know there's a lot of these they go up in the hole uh, let me see if there's one that's not popped out yet yeah so they're like this right and you got to pop them out you got to use this tool to do that get in there and like that and then these will drop out and so they're just holders and there's one two three four of them and then you get to these pry points right here and um, you can pry this thing down and then you'll just need to disconnect these wires and um, let's see what that looks like Yeah, so they just pop out like this. What I did is I used this little tool and, and I pressed down like that to get this out. And depending on your, you know, your configuration when you bought the car, it might be a little different, right? But basically you just press down on this thing and then back it out like that. It's tough to do with one hand. And then this one for the speaker, Looks like it's going to be something similar. Let me figure that out. And so the one for the speaker, I was able to just take the pry tool like that and pop it out. And so this is, I guess they call it a compression fitting or something. But anyhow, it just popped out. All right. Okay, so this guy over here just pops out like that.
Okay. Let's see. And with this, I'm just being careful that I don't crease it or something like that, you know. Alright, so now I can see down in there. Oh, what do you got there? Something there. What is that thing? Okay, that just come pops out, pops out. Alright, it should all just pry right out. This guy's there's a little thing over here we're gonna take out. Here these are cool. And uh, then we get the carpet pulled out. There we go. And all this should come out. Alright. Alright, so the carpet, hard to do with two hands, but um all this is just gonna come right out and it should pop out back to here. All right, so as it turns out, <clears throat> you know, we've probably got enough of this pulled back. I was looking at some other videos, and we probably, I mean, this is all we're gonna need to do to get to this, get to where we need to, and do some wiring. Um, so I'm gonna leave this like this for now. And then there's a way to, there is an, uh, an opening up under there where we can get through to the firewall. So I'm gonna, Open that up from the front side. So this is pretty straightforward. There's a lot of YouTube videos on how to pop this off, but this just pops off. There's a little, you know, they're just compression things, you know. So that's pretty straightforward. And then gonna do is take this guy out so we can take all this out and get in there it's not a big deal we're gonna undo a couple of screws here one two three four screws and then we got to take this light out pop this out so all this stuff just pops right out so this this guy cries out of here It's got some little clips there. Uh, so it looks like you want to do it. Yeah, the way it fits in, you want to do it from the top. Because it, it, it's got some little uh, tabs on the bottom. So you do it from the top. And then I'm going to do this with two hands. But this is, again, one of those compression fittings. So there's no tab to push in. Um, you just slide it out. You jiggle it and slide it out. But I'm going to do it with two hands. And... Um, Yours could be different depending on your model. You know, just kind of take a look at it, and uh, you know, don't break these things because that would be a pain. Okay, so that goes off. Got it out. I'm just tucking this wire back behind here like that. Get it out of the way, and you know, that's how it goes right there. It's just a little opening, and that's what. Let's take a look at this guy. <coughs> Looks like that. Right, so it's just. Just a compression thing, you know? And, you know, if you pry on this part too much, this sheath kind of will slide back. And if it does, just get in there with uh, like a, you, you know, I did use a pair of pliers, but you want to be careful about using anything metal with any of these, because you can scrape these wires. 
and um, and that's not good that's not what you want to do so try to avoid using anything metal on these um, anyhow there we are with that get this out of the way stick it right there I want to do these bolts and pull this guy out So it's a 10 millimeter socket. Right, and then the only other thing is there's some little tabs right here that need to pop out. One there, and one over here. Right, so one over here. Just gotta get that tab out. Okay, so I'm going to leave that tab on there and I'll just pop this guy out. Okay, so it all comes out. Alright, oh, just Alright, so now we gotta take this piece off. Looks like another 10 millimeter bolt. One there, one there. thought you know this is easy but just take your time and don't drop one of these screws because you could wind up spending two hours trying to figure out where the screws at so just be really careful in this area because I don't know what's down there <laughs> I can see the motors and stuff but you know sort of like working in an engine block or doing a valve job you don't want to drop a washer or something down in the engine that can just be that that turns it into a whole nother level of a job um, anyhow so same thing here um, hopefully it would fall through but you know just be careful all right 
that off. This guy just kind of cries off. There we go. There we go. Get this out of the way. Alright, so um, yeah, penetrating the firewall. This is key. Um, and not a lot of information on it. Every car is different. Um, not every car, but you know, there's different configurations. So I've got a lithium battery. Looks like that. I'm going to be attaching to that positive post, right? So that's where I'm going to connect my positive lead. And to get through the firewall, there is an opening right down here. Where my hand is you see there's a circle right there that was capped off with a plug like this right so I could feel it was rubber I just peeled it off and then I was able to fish through there using a big uh, zip tie and I fished its circle about two inches wide but there's padding behind it and I was able to fish up and to the right and um hard to see, but uh let me see if I can get down in there. Well it's the best I can do, but uh anyhow, it comes out over here. And there's some videos, uh there's a guy's got a video online where some of the cars have a blue plug and um and that would work too. Um, however you do it, you got to get through the firewall. So there you can see my my wire coming out. Lead right back here. Ugh. Right there. So, right, so I'm good to go. Now I can pull that um, pull that uh, red wire up to the battery. And um, I don't know. I thought you know I've seen some stuff about going through this the side of this red you know this big gaggle of wires and all that I wouldn't do any of that you need to be careful about I'll, I'll, I'll show you in the video but you got to be careful how you do that because um number one you don't want to mess up anything that's there and number two you want to run this hot wire in such a way that it's not going to chafe right so I'll show you that too all right so most of you probably know how to fish a wire but so basically you know this was going through the firewall and um then I taped my power wire like that so I can pull it through and uh, and don't pull hard right if you need to get somebody to push from the other side and kind of feed it through um, but I'm just going easy okay yep just like that okay so before I connect the power I got a lithium battery, so the way they work is they go like this, you pop up this green thing. I also turned off the power to the car before I did that. I'm just double checking to make sure it's off. Um, so that's in the safety menu at the bottom. You just hit the button power off. To power back on, you have to hit the brake. Um, yeah, so now I'm gonna take this open and then pop this out like that and then this whole thing just comes up so now I've disconnected from the lithium uh, battery you know this isn't the main battery of the car I guess this is just um, not sure what this is I guess this is this is the source for a lot of the electronics and stuff like that so anyhow I am going to thread on to this guy right here
Okay, so interesting. Um, so this thing loosens up. Normally it's a nut and a bolt. Uh, and it, it, I found if you use just a 532nd socket, uh, that'll do it. And you can turn it this way and it'll loosen up like that. And I connect my power. But anyhow, that's how it works. Okay, we got it all zip tied up. Uh, wires running up under there with the corrugated plastic around it. You can see it coming down right there, and then it runs like that over to the power, kind of back behind. And then, you know, I've got it screwed on right there. And there's the lead where it's coming in. All right, so we got power. I don't have the lithium reconnected yet. I'm going to go to the other side and connect up the CAN bus and the ECU, and then we'll cut the power back on. All right, so hard to do this with one hand, but um, so we ran the power cable from there. You can see that little red wire. Uh, yeah, you can see it. And then just tucked it up there, a little bit of protection. And then down around there to the ECU, which we put right there. So there's the ECU. Plugged it in in the back. Made sure the fuse was good. And then plugged in the front right. So there's your portals. And I just plugged in the front right just to see if it would work. And um, there you go. Right, so um, looks like everything's so far so good. So next, um, we'll do, I could do any door, I guess. Um, we'll do one of the doors and uh, get it wired up. Shit. So taking apart these screws was pretty straightforward, you know, just getting them out. Um, there's one here, one up here, and then one back here. Getting the reflector off was a bit of a challenge. Um, I used a metal screwdriver um, but I wouldn't do that. I'm not going to do that on the other side because it put a little bit of a, you can't hardly see it, but a little bit of a, you know, not a chip, but, um, I would just keep getting at it with something plastic, like maybe this thing, something that's got a, a really good edge on it. I tried it with this and it's a little bit too blunt. So, um, something plastic with a really sharp edge will do it. Um, anyhow, more to go. So at the tweeter, it just sits in here like this and it, and it pries straight up from the bottom. So you use your plastic pry tools, um, on either side here and here, and it'll come, it'll pop straight up. So it looks like that on the bottom. And then you just unhook this guy from up here, this little, I don't know what that's for, but it's hooked up there and it runs back behind there so you just take it off here and then pull it out and then the connector for the tweeter was a little bit tough you know it's got a spot in there where you need to press it with something sharp but eventually um, I don't even know if pressing it with something sharp really even helped get it out um, I just kept wiggling it and it came out, but be careful not to mess up the wires. All right, so yeah, the door popped off. You really got to pry it on the bottom. It's it's uh, at first it doesn't feel like it wants to come off, but you got to get up under there with the tool and then get your fingers there and then get some pressure on the door a little bit and then pull from the bottom and it'll pop. And then when it does, then you just lift the whole thing up and it'll come out. And then this is what the wiring looks like, right? So you want to take a picture of all this. So you're going to disconnect this guy. That's pretty straightforward. And, um, and then disconnect these other pieces here. Um, so let me videotape all that so I can remember where it's at. That's the puddle light. And this is where all this stuff went. Like that. And then I gotta disconnect this stuff over here. 
This is for the tweeter. Get all this out. All right, so should all pop right out, but need a good picture so I can put it back. All right. All right, so uh, <clears throat> this guy popped out. It wasn't too difficult. Just make sure and remember to move those two bolts at the top. If you're trying to get that inner cover off and it won't come off, you forgot to take off these two bolts. That's what I did. And um, once I realized it and I took the two bolts out, it came out really easy. It's down and out and um, pretty straightforward. And I just got it out of the way. Um, fishing the wire was a bit of a trick, right? So you're running from this side gets plugged into the ECU and then this side goes through that conduit uh, and out over here, right? So there's your wire. Um, but, so what I had to do is I ran a wire like this, like a stiff wire up in there and got it, use it as a fish and then use some tape, some electrical tape to tape this wire, um, this side of the wire like that. Right, so I had these two guys taped together like that, and then had this fish through the, the conduit, through the rubber grommet and all that. And then you lube it up with this stuff. You can, there's other products like it, but, right, and then that'll, that'll get the wire through there. You'll be able to fish it through. Otherwise, it's pretty tough to do. You're not gonna be able to just take that thing and fish it through there, you know, without, uh, without doing it the way you got to do it. So anyhow, uh, more in a bit. The next step is to get the handle off itself. So there it is, pretty straightforward. Um, there's a connector here. You just pop down that little red tab and it pops right out. So next I'm going to unbolt this guy and then there's some pieces that have to come off of the handle, the OEM handle, onto the new handle. All right, so now we got the handle out. Now we got to move the hall sensor it's a Torx and um, I don't know what this is, T15? Uh, anyhow, so this guy comes out. All right, so we're at that point where um, we're looking at this, they call it a hall sensor, I have no idea what that is, but you can see uh, it says CN on it for Canadian. So that means you don't have to put the metal plate behind there. And um, I've, there's some videos online. There's one guy on a site that was talking about a problem with the doors not opening, like as he approached or something like that. So ultimately that could be related to this plate, like whether the plate's in there or the plate's not there, but um, We'll see. The instructions say not to put the plate in if you've got a Canadian hall sensor, and we do, so no plate. All right, so that's the way that goes back on there. You come do this with one hand, and I'm just screwing it down. Not, you know, when it finally hits bottom, it's just snug. You just want to make sure that thing is not moving, right? Don't need to torque it down. All this stuff is just plastic. You know? All right, so that part's good. Old one, new one. All right. Okay, so interestingly, the, um, the instructions online don't say anything about moving this thing over um, to here but the video does so I'm gonna move it thinking that it can't hurt right so what is this thing doing right it's it's just providing a a base for this thing to sit on I don't think we want that up against the door, you know? So, up against the inside. 
Alright, so I'm gonna move it. Alright, so you got these little clips on here, and you just want to push them in. Hard to do with one hand, but basically you're you're pushing them, lift them up and push them in. There's one there, one there, and one over here, and one here. And that's what you gotta do to pop that guy out the other side. All right, so it just popped out. There's the clips. You can see they got like a little you know, tab on them. And then that guy's gonna go right back in there. Like that. Okay, I tried it both ways. I, I installed this into the door without this piece, and then I did it with the piece. And there's little metal tabs in the door that fit neatly right in these grooves. So it seems to fit, you know, more snug with this. So I'm going to go with it. Um, yep, anyhow, yeah, and it fits pretty much perfect you know that nice flush look is important um, you know we don't want it to look you know like cheapy you know it looks the same right so it looks you know it's the same quality and everything so it's great and when I did a test run when I got the harness in plugged up it was nice and quiet too so that's another plus and that was one of the things that that I understood was one of the differentiators between this product and some of the other products you know there I didn't want to hear eh, you know big a lot of noise when you're walking up to the car that sounds like uh, you know I don't know that's just not not what we're going for right but they're nice and quiet um, anyhow, but we'll check it all out when it's done. Okay, once you got the handle in, then you just connect it back up, right? So you're connecting the, you're connecting the OEM um, connector there. You know, make sure to pop that red thing back up, and then put in your your new uh, connector that you just ran through the conduit. And then plugging it up over here to the front right in this case, because I'm doing that one first. So it's plugging right in there, FR to the FR in the ECI, in the ECU. And then it should work, right? And you're checking to make sure they're not binding or anything, right? So it looks good. I'm going to change that multicolor to just plain white I like the clean look but um, yeah it looks like it's working fine it's not binding up that's really good news because you don't have a lot of options the way that thing fits in there there's not a lot of wiggle room if it didn't already fit pretty much perfect um, it's looking good I don't think we're gonna have a real problem with like moisture and stuff like that it's or you know Rainwater, you know, it's uh, I think all that's gonna be good, you know, it's designed to handle all that. All right, all right. So, next step was to connect the cable from the motor for the front right door to the lock, right? And it was a piece of cake. I'm gonna just lift up this little piece of metal a little bit that's on a spring and you're good to go it's this guy right here right so you're just sitting this down in here and getting this hooked up on that thing right there which is no problem you just this guy can't see it's on a spring like that so you just hook that on there and no problem so we're all set to install this we're going to install the we're going to install this back and then connect that up. Alright, so time to put the motor brackets in. Uh, it says on there, front right, so I, I went through a trial and error to figure out which one was which, but it says... Then we got to put these, you know, grommet type things in there. 
and then that'll mount the motor up in the front door so two hands and uh show you what it looks like all right so we got the latch motor in um and that's what it looks like uh, once you've got it in pretty straightforward so you can't quite see those grommet things here on the other side but you run your PVC up over the thing and uh, not PVC the mm, I don't know what they call that the protector hose where all your wires are coming in from the door they're gonna go up over this motor and uh, then it just bolts in and they use like a wing nut on this side kind of weird but yeah right there you can see it um, but yeah so all that's done so now we're going to hook up the wiring harness for the soft closed door hook up all that stuff a couple of connections and then we'll test it all right, I'm not sure I videotaped that all right so now we've got the cables run for the soft closed door so we got the cable hooked up to the motor we ran the cables nice and neat down below I still got to tie them all up but um got it hooked up got the ground back here up with the uh, back there to the latch itself and then there's another connection back there in the harness where you got to connect up the signal to the latch so um, now we're at a point where we're ready to test the latch and make sure that the door functions properly and then and then it goes the rest of the way you hear the motor going so all good there looking good so that part looks good all right so we tested it once with the screwdriver now we're just making sure all the wires are out of the way and everything all the stuff gets put back that's the speaker and the window and all that stuff <clears throat> there's our release cable so now we're just gonna Make sure nothing's in the way. I don't want to crush the wires or anything. All right? And then we're going to test that bad boy out. Perfect. All right. And then we'll hit this. I need two hands to do it, but pop the release and uh, that'll open it back up all right so that you know that's kind of I don't know call it the hard part I think make sure the windows lined up and you don't screw anything up with the window I mean that's gonna be kind of another hurdle but once I've done that the store will be done you know all right interesting uh, all right so we got the two bolts that one's in this one's in um, to hold this plastic piece up and I'm not using any of the right terms but all right so that's done and then we're gonna just wire this back up uh, according to our picture and our diagram you know hook all this stuff back up on this panel and um, but it's just hanging here now, so I gotta put the 12 bolts in, piece of cake, uh, and then and then wire it up. So let me do that and I'll get back on and show you what it looks like. Alright, so we're wired up, it's wired up back the way it was. Um, you know, just you just wire everything back. You know, refer back to some of the pictures I took earlier and as well, you know, looked at the instructions online that helped some. Um, the pictures were a big help though uh, So now we're gonna put the window back in I marked with tape where the window would fit laterally And then there's tape on the window to show me exactly where how high it should be um, So we can put it right back where it was. So let's do that All right, so um, yeah, there you can see how I did the tape lined it up so the edge of that tape is 
right there, you know, I'm eyeballing it a bit. I think that's the only way to do it, right? And uh, make sure it gets in the groove here. And the window kind of slots down into, into a groove down there. You can see it. It's right down in there. And it's pretty straightforward. I mean, it fits right in that groove. Um, this thing has a bit of flexibility, so when I first tried to put the window in, it was cockeyed a little bit, and um, I had to kind of straighten it up. So, um, yeah, but it wasn't really too much of a problem. It looks looks all right, and uh, we'll test it out as soon as we can hit the button. All right, so I've got the cover off. You know this white stuff, but you can see how this all hooks back together. Just put it back the way it was. Got the emergency cable hooked up. And uh, that's it. So we'll put it back, hang it back up here. When I connected um, the puddle light, the window dropped. So that's a good sign. Because it would have been, in, that's, that's just the way that works. When you pop that puddle light out, it raises the window. And you got to be careful not to shut the door because you can damage things so you always want that window down when it shuts um, yeah so we'll hang this up and see what we got all right so I got this guy and it going in reverse you know I was hanging it and getting this in first you know getting it in the groove and then once I got it on I kind of used my arm like this just so you're not you don't pop it right so and, and I was just bracing myself in popping it in around here it wasn't real hard to do and uh, then I just tested the window oh that's working so we're gonna I'll do another test all the way down and listen for any noises all right so interesting the uh, everything's working good window goes up no noises no evidence that anything's rubbing in there and um, interestingly like when it goes down it slows right at the end and the other side does that too so I guess that's the way they work um, you know what I mean like right at the very end it kind of it kind of it doesn't stop abruptly it kind of slows at the end so it's not as if I thought maybe it was catching but it's not that the other side does it exactly the same way so Everything looks good. I don't see any issues. And if there are, I know how to fix it. Alright. Alright, so um, I just stuck this pry tool down in there and made a space. And then I was able to run that ground wire back up in there and hook it. And then we'll just connect the tweeter and pop it back on.